Okay, so in the interest of time, I will start with my presentation. Uh, my name is Jens Jurevitsky, I work in Jurich, and I will be talking about data logistic uh, parts of the, of the workflow and the software stuff. So, um, the obligatory motivation slide here, uh, I guess we all would agree that most of the scientific computations nowadays are, are driven by data, and this is exactly what data logistics comes in, in terms of the uh, equals for HPC software stack. So that the, the role and, and the job of DLS to, is to fuel the scientific uh, calculations with the required data. So they, they, you basically make sure that the required data is in the right location at the wrong time. Um, this is done by defining what we call pipelines. So the pipeline is perhaps right now not the most fortunate word, but let's, let's stick to that because we want to see the difference between the workflows and pipelines. And this is the formalization of the data movement, basically, that is uh, that are required. Um, and if you have seen my presentations before, I guess you, you've heard that, that point that I'm trying to make, but I think it's really important because we'll, the formalization of the data movements is, in my opinion, a substantial improvement in terms of how you do your science, because it clearly contributes to the uh, reproducibility possibilities. Yes, so you, you have not only the workflow describing the single computation steps, but you can also trace down where the data came from, uh, where it was put, it was processed, or something like that. And this is exactly the kind of solution that we are creating in Equals for XPC. So we are not only describing the the single computation uh, uh, steps in the workflows, but we also include the data movements, providing basically a holistic view, the possibility to share this kind of information with other colleagues and so on and so forth. The other way, uh, which is also somehow relevant to the data logistics service and it belongs to basically the same point, is the integration of the data catalog. So we have our particular reasons to use that, but uh, what you can basically guess from the name of the software solution here, data catalog, it's showing this, the, the, the data, data sets that we are using and uh, the data sets that you can move around with the DLS. So this is also uh, important in terms of the spare principles and the reproducibility of the software. Uh, as it should be clear right now, after part of his presenta uh, presentations, uh, the DLS is part of this uh, eFlows for HPC workflow as a service. And in particular, we have like the first baptism of fire with the minimal workflow where the TLS was responsible for staging in and staging out of the data. But also, as you have seen before, we have this image uh, service uh, where the images are stored. And since the computation in the minimal workflow was done within the container, uh, the container also had to be put on the, on the right location. And that was also just for TLS as uh, will be explained later on. So the current version of the Apache, uh, of the DLS is based on Apache Airflow. Uh, so here's a direct quotation from the web page, which says that the Apache Airflow is a platform to programmatically auto-schedule and monitor workflows. Here again, uh, this is the quotation from the website. We don't call the, the, the things or the, the, the pipelines in the DLS workflows because we have like a high level workflows that, uh, uh, that, 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 that we use the word for. Uh, so uh, important thing is that you define basically those pipelines as, uh, dependencies between the tasks and uh, formally speaking, they are DAGs. So this is also something that Airflow is using in the, the documentation. So they, they, they call these pipelines DAGs directed, directed as a grid graphs. Um, so if you're <laughs> this stuff one in your computer science 101, it basically only says that the task depends on each other and you don't have like a several dependencies and so on. Um, what Airflow also provides you with is uh, uh, the scheduler that will take care of, of execution of the task uh, and there are a number of workers. So you can scale out basically your installation by adding more workers in, in case you require more, more load or expecting more load. And there will be also, I guess, a demonstration of the user interface later in this presentation. So uh, you have to believe me on that one. Yeah. So uh, the task, this is the smallest unit of work basically in Airflow and uh, <laughs> we have two kinds of those. So, so first of all, the operators, you probably imagine what they do. So they operate on the data, but we also have sensors, which also do what you would expect. They are able to detect, for instance, an existence of a particular event, like creation of a file or something like that. Um, 
for when you run, run a pipeline or DAG, you will have to pass instances. Yes, yeah? so they, they know they belong to this particular run that can also be capitalized on. For instance, when you want to take uh, want to make sure that uh, you only touch the data for the for the particular time interval or something like that. So this is also uh, possible here. And there are two ways of defining the task uh, dependencies. So one is by using this uh, bit shift overload the bit shift operator, and the other way around, which is probably a little bit easier. Uh, is to uh, basically use those kind of annotations as, as shown on the right hand side here. So uh, you see, you, you have this task uh, annotations for the method and uh, the, the DAG annotation to create the whole pipeline. And basically, if you ever written even a simple Python program, you probably will very quickly come to grips with that as well. And we also see that it's clearly possible to define the dependencies of the task by uh, analyzing the dependencies in which the methods are run. So for instance, uh, the task move requires the output or the input from the or the output from the as, as input requires the output from the get the URL uh, task. So the Airflow will uh, recognize that and run them in the in the correct order. Um, few more things about the operators. So there are a number of operators already there. Uh, so one which is definitely worth mentioning because I know from uh, from my experience that many people have some kind of scripts for moving the data around and those are written for instance in batch so if you have something like that and you want to integrate that into the apache airflow or the data logistics service as we call that that would be the easiest way yeah so uh and you already get some value added because by outsourcing it as i said before uh, the, the transparency reproducibility is one issue but you also have a service that will take care of that we're trying to run it and if it's not working it will rerun it for you and it will give you information about the performance of that and so on and so forth so you already get something uh, just by putting your existing uh, batch script into the dls the other way which is probably also uh, a very convenient for you is to use the python operator this is actually hidden in, inside those uh, task annotations that i was showing before uh, there are a number of operators that are contributed so for instance if you interact with any kind of uh, known uh, data transfer protocol like HTTP, SSH, or something like that, that there are operators for that. Also for most of the popular databases, if you want to modify or move the data around for the database like Postgres or MySQL, then there is an operator for that. Um, if, in case you want to create a little bit more complicated uh, situation when you also try to, try to do something with the data, but it's the, this, this modification is too small to, to use an HPC for that, then you can also in, include like a Docker operator inside of your uh, uh, of your pipelines, and there will be an example on that later on. And there's also uh, something that, that people sometimes forget about it, but there's a possibility for these different messaging systems. So it's um, it's, it's, it's question of, uh, of of culture, I guess, but you can include some kind of messaging in your um, uh, in, in your pipeline sequences to get an information oh there's a new data set available or i just uh, the, 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 the 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 copying of the data is just finished or something like that so you can use email or slack or this do that uh, a few words about scheduling so we are not really using this functionality of airflow very intensively right now but i guess it uh, could be a good use cases where this is relevant so you can basically define that particular pipeline should be run periodically or a particular date or something like that uh, and there are some additional quips here, which I will, I guess, just speak for uh, for, for today. Uh, one interesting thing, but I should not uh, say that perhaps, uh, this is the SLA. So I know there is always this tension between the users. They want to have some kind of uh, service level agreement and uh, the, the service providers were, I, I, I just put the data, it was not that quick or something like that. So there's a possibility to also formalize those kind of stuff. So if, if it's relevant in the future. That will also be interesting. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm not a big fan myself of this, you know, boxes and, and arrows, but nevertheless, to give you a little bit an overview of what is under the hood. Uh, so uh, in terms of airflow, it was already uh, comprised of multiple components. So as I said before, we have workers, and you can scale out. You can add more workers into your uh, um, uh, the deployment, basically. Uh, we have this scheduler that talks to the executor that gives the information to the worker, hey, please run this particular task. And when the worker is uh, is, is, is doing that, uh, we add this kind of data catalog here. So so, so basically, rather than hard-coding the URL, for instance, for the data that could be moved, 
you can provide it with uh, with some kind of ID that will be resolved with the data catalog to obtain this URL. So this is an additional step or additional abstraction layer which allows you to create a pretty generic pipelines uh, that can be run on different data sets. And those data sets are just put in the data catalog. So that's uh, help us to, to, to basically reduce the number of pipelines. Uh, there are cases where it works pretty well. I guess there are also cases where you just want to hard code and just have a, have a particular pipeline that will only be responsible for maybe one kind of data. Uh, so once the worker resolves this kind of ID on the on the location, it can interact with those locations. So for instance, during, using HTTP or, or, or WebDAV, which we recently added, or SSH for that matter. Uh, since SSH usually <coughs> sorry, requires some kind of um, authentications, we also have a uh, default component, which is responsible for credentials management. And this part is also shared with the higher level uh, Tosca descriptions, because they also have to have system, the supercomputer using SSH. What is new, and I uh, want to pick up on that, is the uh, separate component, which we call DAG repository. So this is where the pipelines are, uh, are inside. And if you go to the equals for HPC Git uh, uh, repository, you will find that there is a, a separate repository. And what is good about it, as what was, why is that important is that when, when you are interesting, so for instance, after the, today's presentation, you want to write your own pipeline, you can just look inside what kind of pipelines we have there and perhaps modify to accommodate your use case. And once you create a pull request and this will be accepted, the, 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 the text will be put on, uh, on our two uh, production uh, instances of data logistics, which one is in Barcelona and one is in Yulich. Um, so uh, there's minimal workflow was already uh, set up, so I don't want to talk too much uh, about it, but nevertheless, I think it's a good starting point when you want to understand how the workflows in equals for HPC works and uh, in, in order to also understand what kind of parts of that will be covered by DLS. So this is the simplest workflow that you can come up with. It could come up with. So it basically includes the staging of the data from the external repository, as Jorge already explained. The stage out of the results. Yes, so you want to make your results visible, of course, in, by using the, you know good scientific practice. And uh, we also require the image for the computation. So this image transfer is also happening here, and those parts are uh, in, in responsibility of the DNS. I will just pick one of them as so one of those pipelines. This is the staging pipeline, um, making it a little bit more concrete. We take the data from Bit to Share. This is like a, a data repository created in the UDAT project and right now run by the UDAT infrastructure. And the target location is the SSH, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a BSC, uh, where we, which we access to the SSH. Um, so I include the overview of the tasks. As I said before, the pipeline is composed of multiple tasks. Uh, what, what happens here is that we actually have this extract phase because the b 2 share use the notion of the data object that includes the metadata, but also a list of files. So in worst case, you will have multiple files that, that needs to be uh, staged in. Therefore, we first of all prepare this kind of list of, of files, and then we move it to the target location. There's also some, some additional steps with uh, setting up the SSH connection, but uh, this is just an implementation uh, detail in the end. Uh, one thing that uh, was was mentioned here, and I already uh, alluded to that, is that we, we try to make our pipelines a little bit more generic, uh, so not include the, uh, the actual location of the uh, B2 share object into the pipeline, but rather we provide the DLS pipeline with a parameter that points out to the uh, data catalog, and this data catalog in turn uh, points out to the uh, to, to the B2 share uh, location. Yeah, so that helps us uh, by by. When, when you want to use the same pipeline to move different data sets. And as I said, there is also this data catalog where you can basically see, go and see what's, uh, what's there. The same approach is also used for the data management, but this is a different uh, workflow. So when, when you do the stage out, you basically also want to, want to add some additional information for that data that you have just created. And that's all, which is good because my voice is uh, disappearing slowly. Nevertheless, if there are questions right now, I will be happy to answer them when Maria is setting up herself for the demonstration. There is a question in the chat, then I read it for you. Maybe I will read because then, oh no, oh, yeah, no, so. You can read it. No, no, yeah. No, 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 it's the other way around. Yeah, I have to yeah, repeat your questions. Sorry. I, uh, uh, sorry. Please read uh, me. I'm a little confused between the workflow generated by Airflow and the JSON or YAML clones explained in the first part of the presentation. Is the latter exclusive to specify the hardware software requirements while the former is the actual code? 
Yeah, so this is exactly the problem with the workflow that we're using at different uh, locations. So um, we have like <laughs> two levels of, uh, of, of workflows here. So the, the, the highest level is uh, what will be coming after my presentation. Uh, those are the, the, the description that includes both the, the computation steps and data movements. So the data movements we call pipeline. So this is not a workflow. And then when you do the computations, you can have also a workflow, which is the PyCons that was shown in the first one. Yeah, so I don't know if I explain it or make it a little bit more confusing even, but uh, I guess it will, uh, after after today, if it's not clear, then we, we, we did the wrong job, but I, I guess it will be clear after the next presentation exactly where we, what kind of work we're talking about. Okay, Maria, please take over. So hi everyone, Maria Petrova from Yulish as well. Um, I'll show you a quick demo. It's about to be just a teaser and show in practice what uh, Yenge was talking about, the integration between the data catalog where we have like a catalog of our different locations from where we get or can put the data and uh, the data, like a data logistics pipeline, which is not a word. <laughs> um, let me just get to... Yeah, perfect. So I will start with the demo user. I'm sorry to disappoint. <laughs> so uh, this will be the, the UI from Airflow, which if you're going from the top, of the whole workflow you won't need to really use. Um, but uh, this is uh, something that you could use just for the data pipelines. And what I want to show you is this Docker in Worker very quickly. And I'll go to the beautiful graph. So basically, this is uh, kind of the idea that we have set up a separate server that is just a Docker dedicated server where you might want to post process, pre process some small Docker tasks. So you can start your Docker image on the cloud. This is not HPC here, but it's the idea that maybe you have like something quick that you want to, you know, process in Docker and not necessarily push on the HPC and have singularity and have all this hassle. So, so basically what we want to do is we want to grab the data to stage it in, to move it to the Docker host and then run the container. And uh, here I have just some validation of the results. And then we want to retrieve the results and stage them out somewhere on some storage. Register is an additional task, which we can register it on the data catalog again. We don't have to, we could. So we have the data catalog has then all the storages where you can pull the data from and the data sets to push them back as just an ID. So I know this sounds abstract. I will run it right away. And then I have like middle tasks to clean up all the, the data from the Docker container, uh, the, 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 the remote storage. So I will just run a beautiful example. Let me go to the data catalog maybe for a second. So there we have our beautiful data catalog and our storages. So let me take this heat demo data set with actually lies on B2 share as a testing instance, but we have registered it here. So I would need this ID. And then I'm going back to the data logistics and try to run with some configuration parameters. So this is like JSON with the parameters. What you will need here is an ID. Oh, yes, clear Spanish. <laughs> Let me see. Ah, yeah, that was the keyboard. The keyboard, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always a challenge. Well, you're always saying it's taking too much uh, large effort. Ah, uh, let me, yeah, let me. One second, I'll try my best. That's better. You see better? A bit more. Mm 
Um, so we'll pull our data from here, which is a bit of a useless example right now, because I'll use the amazing Docker image, which is always the mass. Okay. And then I might want to register it again uh, in the data catalog. Uh, and to register that was true. So, and if everything goes right, this should not run. So, now here we can check the result either on the tree view or in the bit more beautiful graph. Okay, beautiful, it ran. So basically it pulled the data from the data catalog over here, um, which is a hit example, which I will show right away very quickly as well. Ran a container, cleaned up all the data that we just pulled because we don't want them to sit somewhere and uh, fetch all the results, hopefully to be to share and register them. So we can check in the log over here, and there we have some link. And 14th of September, that will be our data set. That will be a stage out text file, which is hello from Docker, like amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> back to the graph. Let's check also the registration in the data catalog. Which also gives us a beautiful link. And so will the URL to the testing. And here will show us also the files that have been registered in a JSON format. Anyway, long story short, this it's we can check results on the data catalog. On the data catalog, yes, absolutely. I just have to find the way to Yeah, correct. Now we can see that would be from the 14th. There it is. Let's find the date. So that would be the nutrition right in the day. If I still see that one. Yeah, so that will be the result on the share with uh, the OID. Okay, um, just two more minutes. I want to show you a bit more reasonable example and because I can do that, I'll show you. Um, Here it is code. So you can view the code of this whole thing. And because I'm so good and I can optimize it, I'll just copy paste an example. So we'll do it again. It's a bit of a more reasonable example than Hello World. And um, that would be, so let me talk you a little bit through it. So that will be the same object ID with the data uh, data set for heat because we have just a small heat Docker image. Well, the image is not small, the example is small. So it's a heat Docker image and we're taking the two files. Basically one of them is the execution. The other one is a clustering example. We are taking the data and we are getting like an output of like clustering example from heat. So I can define my entry point in this case, I would need it because the Docker image in this case doesn't have an entry point. And I just want to run the script, which is demo heat, uh, demo can, and this is the data set that it needs. <laughs> and this would be my output result that I will be looking for. And then, yeah, I would like to register it. Like the default is false, I might not point it out, but 
if I do, like it will register it again back to the um, dev catalog. So I'll just quickly run that as well. And yeah, this, this runs pretty quickly because I have already pulled the image before that. Uh, otherwise, it was like a bit wild on the Docker uh, remote machine to pull the image. Um, but yeah, this ran pretty quickly. And maybe we can just very quickly check on the results. And that will be like my calculation, which at the moment doesn't say much, it's just an example. And some, uh, and some output file, which also doesn't say much. Okay. Um, last but not least would be just as Yanchi was explaining, everything is not really scary. It's just Python. And I'm going through the full way of going through the repository where you can see our back repository it's lined here and then you can watch it also on docker worker and then you can just review the code just be curious check it out it's not a witchcraft it's just python with a couple of more lines like for example you have here and Like just the LS results to check that we have everything there. I'm using the SSH operator to connect to the Docker remotely and just to check printing results using this hook. And what I'm doing is just LS minus IL of the directory. So that will be one of the multiple tasks, but you compose all of the tasks and then you define the order at the end. So if you have simple programming knowledge, that should be like good enough, basically. This is one way of defining, defining the connections between the tasks. This would be another way down here. So yeah, just be curious, browse and ask questions. It's kind of a small teaser and we can start from here and grow bigger if you really find it useful when you need it. So any initial thoughts, questions? Online as well. Yeah, well, since this is a bit specific on the use of these containers, which I don't know if this would be the typical case, can you show more typical case of what would be the pipeline or a workload that you would find? Have one? We don't have one. It's more like, yeah, so it's kind of a teaser, an idea, and we want to see if this is like useful in the practice. The ones from the minimum it will not show the pipeline. Did I show the pipeline for the minimal workload? Yeah. Yeah. It's the uh, yeah. task from the back of the pipeline. Yeah. 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 You mean the, the staging in part? No, not, but not here. I mean, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This is the, the Docker in particular. Yeah. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, this is a specific use case. Um, that's correct. You mean one of those task flow or the image transfer? Yeah. Image transfer. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. yeah. So that would be again okay. set up the connection. That would be the connection um, to the repository. 
This is for the international semesters. Okay, yeah, this part you probably should explain. I thought that it's uh, the connection that you set up to get the image, to pull the image. Yeah, come. No? That's all. Yeah. It's been a couple of years, but like 14 months, so I. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just give the general idea. So, yeah. you don't know. To give an idea of what would be more typical. And the other one is a bit yeah, they are less typical. In the end, very yeah, similar to each other. Like possibility. So starting from the from the bottom, uh, we have those tasks that are responsible for setting up the SSH connection. So those are reused across all this, all three uh, pipelines in uh, in the minimal workflow. Um, so basically, what happens here is that uh, they, they connect to the vault and get the credentials that were required in the uh, in, for the upload. And we have actually only one task here, which is which is relevant. So um, you probably recognize this uh, URL. It's it's where the image creation is done, and it takes an uh, argument of the image ID. This is the image that should be put on the on the target location. And what happens here is that it used this SSH hook with the connection that was just set up in the previous step, and then uh, yeah, some additional checks if the file is already there. Perhaps you don't want to copy it over and over. There they are usually pretty pretty large. Uh, this is a, a bug that we have encountered. You have to touch the file before you can actually write there. And what happens here is that you basically have these streams. Uh, yes, yeah, so you, you get a, a stream from the request from the URL and you have the, the remote names stream with some additional, uh, you know, uh, the, this pipelining, for instance, was indeed very, very helpful for, for speed up. And yeah, it's, I didn't want to write it like that, but you have just a, just a, a loop reading from the, from the input and writing it to the uh, to the output basically so reading from the url and writing to the target location so we uh yeah we just create this image location here and that's that's basically it as simple as it gets yeah mm -hmm.